do it, Lord. Right. Lord, you know, how and much then, he loved me. And let me give an example of what I mean also by taking off the mask. And God wanted me to give this example because we came up uh, recently, not that long ago, to come see you guys up in Michigan. Remember that, Steve? Right. We mean you actually did a show in my uh, sister-in-law's basement at the time. I brought all my stuff with me, yeah. but the day that the day before then, they ended up bringing out a gun that they had that wasn't loaded, but they brought out a gun because they had to change it over to the to a new lockbox because the one they had was was messing up. The lock was not working right, and they had to transfer it over to a new lockbox. So they clicked the gun around for a minute, and I started having an anxiety attack. Okay, I started having these issues, these feelings, and these thoughts about that gun. And the first thing that came to my mind, Steve, was I hate my father. And don't get me wrong, I shouldn't, but I at that moment, I the words came out of my not my mouth, but in my mind. Said, and I said to myself, I hate my father. And I had such an issue, and I moved over to the couch because of the gun situation. And I was sitting there, and my wife goes, uh, Mrs. Cusick says, Are you okay, Andrew? I, you know, she goes, you okay, hon? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm rocking back and forth, just having an anxiety attack. But I said, yeah, I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay. But I put on that mask and told people I was okay, even though I wasn't. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's what the mask is all about. It's putting it on and that pretending was, to be okay when you're not. That was, that was, it was committed suicide or trying to take you out. You know, your father, who was brains out. Well, he was, the it devil. Was you, I don't know if you want to tell the story or not, but I'll leave it up to you. About what? The gun. Oh, about my father? Yeah. Um, most of my listeners already know that my father shot himself through the back of the neck and blew his brains out. I mean, I wasn't physically there at the point, but I was right. I was close enough to where when I walked by and I saw what looked like ketchup on the ground. What the, what was I supposed to think? So right. I, I thought... But here's the tree thing. The gun was loaded, but but didn't he have a trigger on it? Like no, the gun wasn't loaded. It was no, the gun was loaded. It had one bullet in there, but it was broken and the hammer was all rusted. The the the, the hammer was rusted. And yeah, so it the was, trigger. The hammer wasn't even on at all. No hammer. But yet somehow. Well, how did that gun boot just blew blew boots blew like that? You know? That's what I would like to know. What happened with that gun? Because that hammer wasn't even there. And it still went off. Yes, sir, it did. So, See, the devil didn't want you to go where to go because you get a call in your, in, in your ministry. Oh, absolutely. People don't know your whole life story, but I, I know enough of it. So the devil wants I mean, to... Someday, someday you, just give your, you had to give, you give your testimony to everybody. Yeah, so the devil wants me every day to try to commit suicide. He wants me every day to try this. He tries to do everything he can. He even brings guns into my life to, to make me have anxiety attacks. But you know what? Through God, I need to get rid of this. And God knows I do, and I will. And I still love my dad no matter what. I don't exactly want to have him back in my life, but I forgive him. But, right. I, but I still, to a degree, have issues with him because of, you know, it's like, you know, things that he's done. Yeah, God had mercy on him. Right. God God had mercy on him by I think God had mercy on him by taking his life. Right. Because he was see, Go ahead. See, you know, we're, we're talking to me and your friends, you know, with friends and everything, but we're not putting we're speaking the truth, the hard truth. Right. We're not putting on a mask no. either. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're not putting on no mask. We don't put a mask on. We're we're speaking the truth, and I'm going. And I'll tell you right now, Steve. I'm going through some issues. I'm going through some feelings about talking about this. But you know what? It's who I. It's what I need to do. I need to put them. I need to put on the realness of the truth and not the mask. You speak, you speak the words out of my mouth. You hear me? Yeah, I know. I always yeah. do, don't I? <laughs> yeah. So people out there. If you need a friend, give me your, uh, you know, just a friend, even someone with hello, talk to or anything. You feel suicidal, you want to understand about God. See, we we speak the love of God. You know, I have to know though. I'm not going to throw scripture at the scripture yet. You and 
tell you where to locate it at, and this and that and that. You know, basically is that God loves you. God wants a relation with you. He's he's not a fake, he's always real. Maybe you not quite understand who he is, but you will get to understand him. God's a merciful God. And just like I'm talking to you, like like I'm talking to Andrew, how God is. Right. Amen. Amen, bro. Let's get the Lord God clap off. Him. We're here in the Lord clap off and we're thanking you, Lord, that you are still here and you do what you are doing and that we are being real with your word, Lord, and that we are being real with you so we can give this message to the people as a word of encouragement. Yes, Lord. And you put the mask on? The devil does. All the time. Face person you ever know. What or is, whatever it is. What does the Bible say? <laughs> what does the Bible say? The Bible says he can come and look like an angel of light. Yep, he does. The outward appearance of the devil can look like somebody who's holy. Look like an angel of light coming down going. And tell me, tell me how you recognize the devil. How you I, take that mask off. Somehow, Andrew. Because what the devil says sounds good at first, but it becomes sour to the stomach afterwards. Right. But you get to around you pray to God, Jesus Christ. Right. Test the Lord of God in Jesus' name. You put the blood of Jesus on it. Watch it see the devil runs. Yep, test the spirit by the spirit. Right. The angel comes of angel the angel comes of the angel of light. You know? And then the angel of light can be also be a trickster. The devil. Oh absolutely. And they could yeah. have the devil come with the scripture and show show love and it would be somehow he's a trickster and change it man. You will have no peace at the end. Right. It's Unless like, you don't, you, know, you think you might have peace, but you really don't. You might not understand scripture fully. It's like I, it's like I was going to say. The devil's coming down. Oh, and he's like, I was sent by God. No, you weren't. You were sent sent by yourself to go come deceive me. One, you were not sent by God. Right. But he makes you think he was yeah. sent by God, and then he really wasn't. See, see the devil knows God. Ain't no scripture. But one thing the devil cannot talk about is who? Jesus Christ, right. the Messiah. Right, Jesus, the Son of God. He can't. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, demons run. tremble and Satan flees. So let me ask you a question. If we know Jesus and Jesus lives inside of us, can the name of Andrew and Prophet Steve make the devil flee and run? No. He can't? But. Let me ask you again. Listen, not, listen, not, hold the name, on. not the name. Not the name. But the person who's in him, which is the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ, in him, right. make him run. But what I was not mask, the name. Right, but what I'm No mask, name. No way. Did it wrong because no name's higher than who? Than Jesus. I understand that. But if, because yeah. the Bible says, we, right. but the Just Bible know. says we all have, we can all, we'll, we'll all do things that are what bigger than what Jesus did in his ministry on earth, right? And right. if Jesus lives inside of us, just the mere sight right. of us and the fact that we have a calling on our lives to destroy him, that makes him flee, is what I'm right. trying to say. That right there will make him flee. Our calling right. on our lives and Jesus that lives inside of us and all that together. Just the sight of seeing his children makes him flee too. It's not what, it's not what Andrew or Steve did, but it's Jesus Christ did. did in you. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Now you got to be obedient to him and do what he, God called you to. Right. It's like I said, it's the calling. It's not the actual me or you, it's the calling on our lives that's what makes him flee. The calling on our lives is to to demolish the devil, to get him out of, to get people saved for Christ and away from him. To take right. as many it's souls as we can to right. heaven. Right. Like a lot of people, maybe two-thirds of this world will be fooled. Right. And there's a, there's a song. There's a Things song. Warning. Right. 
there's a song that Prophet Larry sings, and and it says, "Take someone with you when you go to heaven. Take somebody with you." Right. Because you don't want to go alone. No, you don't want to go alone. You do not want to go to heaven alone. God, for sure. God, God, God didn't want you to be alone. Right. Or come alone. Now, if you did come alone, your words in heaven is very, very small. You're like a servant. Right. And it'd be like, for those who brought many, many through Christ, in Jesus' name, were saved. You probably be serving them, maybe. Right. Because God does have slavery. And God will use his slaves as an example to show the devil. You know, you cannot. Like, Absolutely. But we need to be genuine when it comes to proclaiming Christ. We don't want to be like the hypocrites who sit there and pretend to be Christian and know all the nice little cliches and. Know all the nice little words that the Bible is saying and can quote it from word to word. It's not that you can quote his words to you. It's not that you know, like Dan used to say, well, where's it at? It's not that you know where it's at and you can quote it. It's the actual meaning behind the message and how you portray it. If you sit there and portray it as the word, say that, go ahead. The word of God. And study the word of God and recognize the word of God. Right. The most important thing to do uh, is having a relation with God and knowing Him, how He works. Oh, yeah. It's not one of those, well, I am pretending to be a Christian. And the Bible says, no, it's one of those things. The Bible says you get right with God now or you go to hell. So. Examples. I can know scripture hey, Lonnie. and read it in my hand, but what's the rainbow word? Or right. What's behind the rainbow word? What's the, the three dimensional word the guy want to show you? What's the real right, right down to the beat? Right. It's it's what's behind the word. It's the word itself that's powerful. Not that you know where it's at or what it says or can quote it. It's it's how you portray that word. If you portray that word with power and passion, then that word will go far. If you portray that word right. with I'm a fake Christian. You put on that fake smile and fake mask and say, don't you love yourself? Jesus loves you, the Bible says. Then then that's where you're going to get up to heaven. God's going to look at you and say, you know what, brother? Get away from me. I don't know who you are. You work over iniquity. Get thou behind me. Right, because you say, oh, Jesus loves you. This and that. I mean, that's, see, you know, that's good. People probably look at more, maybe add some, some like, Prophets and pastors, like they're like like God, which yuck. And that's good that Jesus loves everybody, but you got to be able to, as I say, Steve, do that with realness. Be real about oh, yeah. about what you're saying. Don't try to be fake about. It. Be real about what you're saying. If so you, what happens? So what happens? When that mask come off. Well, you put that or keep that mask on. Well, what happens when you keep that mask on is you become what's called a hypocrite or fake. And you start, how do I say this, Lord? You start, I'm trying to think of the word. You start becoming stagnant and stagnant in God. Right, right. But, but here's, I just put it this way. When you go to heaven, I mean, you go to heaven, I mean, you get heaven there, judgment day. And Jesus Christ says, there's no God in you. No, you get an Ichabob spirit, you know. Right, you become stagnant. You said, you know, you said a hypocrite. God hates a hypocrite. <laughs> I mean, what's what's more powerful if I said Jesus loves you or Jesus loves you? What's more powerful? The first one, because you said that with power. But when you do this and you put that mask on and Jesus loves you, don't you love yourself? Eventually you're going to be like, so stagnant, you go, Jesus loves you. Don't you just love yourself? But in your mind, you don't love anything about yourself. Now explain, now explain to me. Listen, listen, listen to my words. So you catch on. Jesus loves you. Right. Oh, actually. Now what? Now what is, what is God telling you? 
God's telling you that he loves you and he's being real about the love that he has for you. All right.